Another episode of Keeping It Real with Rob. I'm your host, Rob Connett. Today, the big man on campus. We are talking with Levi Gingrich from the Green Level Varsity Baseball team. What's up, Levi? Thanks for joining us, man. Of course. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me on. All right. So, first off, for those that do not know, uh, this week you threw a no hitter against Panther Creek, 10 0 win for the Gators. Can you kind of walk me through? how you were feeling and, and when you started to realize, oh, I might have a little something going here. Oh, well, let's see. I guess we started out the game. Uh, we started out big. I think we got three runs in the first inning, which was huge because uh, we typically do well when we when we jump out in front. That's how most teams are. You, you jump out in front and you have this momentum going for the rest of the game. Um, and I guess like the first three or four innings, I was kind of we were kind of just going through it. Um, I wasn't really thinking about anything, no hitter or anything like that. Um, because I think it was still only like four zero going into the fifth inning, um, which was my last because we ended up run ruling them. So I, I wasn't really thinking about it at that point. Um, since I would have had two more innings to go. Um, but then in the with two outs in the fifth inning, I got hit in the wrist um on a comebacker. So that kind of threw things all over. Um I stayed in there, but hurting quite a bit I think it was the adrenaline that that kept me going in there um but then we we finished out that inning clean uh came back and I think we scored five or six runs in the bottom of the fifth and and that was it it was pretty exciting so you at at no point were you thinking I I have a a no hitter going I know superstitions are for real when it comes to baseball and a lot of sports but especially baseball so you and and the rest of the guys Was it one of those moments where, like, we're not going to say anything, we're not going to jinx it, we're not going to do, like, let's just keep this going? I didn't even really think of it until I entered in the fifth inning. I was like, hey, they don't really have any hits yet. But nobody was talking to me about it. So people were kind of leaving me alone in the dugout. And then uh, you guys, you know, like you said, it ends with a 10-run rule uh, with you at bat. And so game ends, and and then did it realize, did it kind of register with you, like, and that was just a no hitter. I just threw a no hitter. Yeah, it it was it was exciting. I like it was not until that at the end of that inning I, that it really like sunk in. It was like that's pretty cool. It was exciting. Um, and I'm just I'm just glad that we were able to pull through with the win. I think it's going to be really big for the team's confidence moving forward in the the last couple of weeks of the season. And, and that kind of leads me into my next question. I know this season has not been the greatest for Green Level Baseball. It's been a little bit of a struggle. But yes, you know, yesterday had to have been uh, one of those moments where like, hey, positive thing, positive thinking. This is exactly what we needed for 2023. Oh, definitely. I mean, it's probably one of our most solid games defensively. I think it's the most runs we've scored all year. So I think that the and the team went out to bricks after the game. We had middle schoolers come to the game. We threw and we played wiffle ball with them afterwards. So I think I think yesterday is something that's really going to help propel us into uh better days the next next few weeks few weeks left in the regular season uh yes. i want to go back to superstitions a little bit do you have any other superstitions i always ask baseball players this because i feel like baseball has more superstitious players than than any other sport you know or do you have to wear your lucky socks every game do you you know what do you have anything when it comes to superstitions well, I tr- I try not to have too much, but um, I do wear the same pair of socks and same pair of underwear and same belt for every game that I uh, start. Um, then I kind of just I've just always done that. I, I pick one uh, set before the season starts, and I just roll with it for the whole time. And unless I start out bad, then I switch it up. <laughs> of course, of course. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but then like with warm ups and stuff, I try and keep the same routine, which is. That's yeah, it's partially superstition, but it's more just to keep me, you know, a little bit regimented. Um, how'd you get your start in in baseball? Do you remember at a were you at a at a young age where you know you first picked up the bat and and fell in love with it? Well, I think I was I was probably three or four. It was back when I lived out in the Chicago area. 
Um, I started out in, in T-ball there. I got started. Um, I kind of have always pitched uh, through my whole life. I've always been one of the pitchers on the team, one, one of the starters. Um, and then hitting has been something I used to switch hit when I was younger. And then that hitting has kind of deteriorated as I've gotten older and focused more on just solely pitching. Um, but I, I've played baseball and pitched basically my whole life, everything that I can remember. You, you mentioned that you grew up in the Chicago area. I'm I'm from Indiana. I noticed uh, behind you a Chicago White Sox pillow. Yes. With White Sox, your favorite team growing up? Oh, definitely. Still are. Um, I loved watching watching them. I mean, we're not very good right now. We got a lot of injuries the past few years. But it's still fun to go out and watch games. Uh, we're going back up into Chicago uh, this summer for a Cubs and Sox game. It's going to be really fun. My That's, brother, yeah, my brothers are both uh, Cubs fans, so it's a little bit of tension. Yeah, I was going to say, for, for those that do not know, you know, Chicago, when it comes to Cubs and White Sox, and again, growing up in that area, it's one it. or the other. Yeah. So how did how did you become White Sox and your brothers are, are Cubs fans? Um, I don't really know how I became a Sox fan. It's kind of just... I think I saw that they were probably the first team that I watched or something. And I was just like, Oh, okay. I'll like this team now. Um, and I think that my younger brothers, my, especially the middle one, he saw, I like the white Sox. He's like, okay, I'm going to like Cubs. So he's of course. Going to the opposite. And um, the youngest, he started getting into baseball more right when the Cubs were in like in 2016, when they were winning the world series. So that, I think that's kind of how he got hooked. You got a favorite um, player? Uh, well, Favorite all time is uh, Paul Konerko, but right now, uh, probably Dylan Cease. Nice, nice. Uh, how many how many major league ballparks have you been to? Let's see, Sox and Cubs. I think that actually might be it. I've been to a lot more minor league fields, but not not too many major leagues. Been to a lot of Sox and Cubs games though, yeah. especially back yeah. when we lived over there. When did you uh, When did you move to North Carolina? Uh, it would have been 2018, 2019. It was right as I started eighth grade. So about four or five years ago. How many ballpark? Uh, how many uh, minor league ballparks? Or do you have a favorite? Well, favorite is probably the Durham Bulls. That's it's a really nice setup over there. We we were actually at a game this past weekend. Um, we always really enjoy going over there. Um, it's a nice area. It's a nice field. They've always got good games over there. So. I'd say that's probably the favorite. Um, out in Chicago, we would go to King County Cougars games. I remember growing up and watching those. That was a lot of fun. Such a small world because I grew up as as a Fort Wayne Wizards, Fort Wayne Tin Caps, and they're in the same. They were in the same league as as King County. Really? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to used to uh, work at a radio station that that would broadcast Fort Wayne baseball games. And I, I remember doing a few games where, you know, the broadcasters like, yeah, we're in Kane County. It's a small world, man. That's awesome. Speaking of the Midwest, I want to ask you about your future as well. Uh, you have committed to play baseball at Wash U, that is in St. Louis. Uh, how, how did you come to that decision? Um, well, it was it kind of came down to a, a lot of factors. I had to consider both the academics um, because I want to study engineering in school and it's the perfect setup over there for me to study that. They've got they've got pretty new facilities over there for engineering and they're they're ranked pretty well. They've got good professors. So that that was really exciting to me. Um, and then it mixed with the baseball aspect. Um, it was really important to me as I was searching for a school to find a team where the players were very motivated and they were very supportive. So, you know, you got the guys that you pick up each other. Everybody's got a camaraderie, I guess. Um, and as well, finding a coach that would be very supportive of me balancing uh, being a student and being a baseball player in college. Um, and I think I found the perfect mix up there. I'm, I'm really excited. I've gotten to meet a lot of the players and the coach, of course. Um, and it's just really exciting to me. Yeah, I'm excited for you too as well, man. Should be a fun time up there at uh, at Wash U, and they have they have great athletics as well. Like like I was telling you before we went on air, uh, back in Indiana, I got a chance to work for a D3 school. They played Wash U every once in a while, and it seems like just about every sport Wash U is making the playoffs, making the NCAA tournament. So looking forward to it, man, and keeping a, keep an eye on your uh, your collegiate career. 
Thank you. I'm, I'm excited. They're, they're having a good year right now. I think they're 23 and eight. All right. Time for the uh, final part of our show. We always like to end every episode of Keeping It Real with Rob with a segment we like to call Investigator. This is how this works. Uh, Levi, I'm going to ask you some rapid fire questions that don't necessarily really have to do with sports. Uh, just to get to know you a little better, you just give me your answers as, as quick as you can, all right? All right, here we go. Question one. Uh, the number one food that you hate? Uh, fish. Fish, not a fan of fish. Yeah, not a big seafood guy. Okay. Uh, your dream job. I know you said you are studying engineering. What, what would be your yeah. dream job? Uh, I'd love to be the, the work with uh, aerospace stuff. So with rocket ships or something like that. Yeah, that'd be really cool. That'd be really cool. Yeah. Something that your parents or family members have taught you that's going to stick with you forever. Um, just to stay focused and dedicated on everything that I do. Make sure, make sure you put 100% into everything, no matter what it is. I like that. All right, last question. Favorite smell? Oh, um, freshly, uh, freshly laid uh, tar. Like they don't really do it out here very much because it's all concrete driveways. But out in Chicago, everyone had the the tar driveways, the blacktop driveways. Yeah. And when they uh, put that down every year, I don't know why, but it smelled really good. I know exactly what you're talking about, especially like when they do like new roads. They're doing construction. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Not as great for the tires on your car and it sticks and all that stuff, but I completely understand what you're talking about. That smell. I'm not sure it's not good for the nose either, but <laughs> it smells pretty good. <laughs> Levi Gingrich from the Green Level Baseball team. Congrats once again on the no-hitter, man, and uh, looking Thank forward you. to seeing you play at Wash U in St. Louis. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me on.